in five, four. We're live. Okay. Hello, everyone. We are pumped about doing this. This is the first go round with uh, Connected Convos. We are trying to come up with some ways, creative ways, to get people um, discussing technology in the classroom, maybe even during lunchtime where people are having their um, lunch inside of their you know lounge and maybe posting something like this up there we're hoping to get some people involved and spotlight the amazing things teachers are doing and today we're just going to be talking about some technology tools and a uh, few of us have been talking on Voxer and decided to do this so I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself I'm Jamie Donnelly and I am in East Texas Gladewater ISD and whoever wants to go next Okay, I'll go, Lisa. <laughs> I am Andy McNair, and I am in Central Texas in Bosqueville ISD. Um, love my job. I teach the gifted and talented students in grades uh, kindergarten through fifth grade. So that's awesome. Cool. And I am Lisa Montai. I am the technology specialist here in Waco ISD, which is also in Central Texas. And so I'm very close to Jamie. And I mean, I'm very close to Andy. Awesome. Okay, so I wonder how far away are we distance-wise? Do you guys know? I have to look. I have to Google that. I know. I'm out here in Gladewater. I'm Let's curious. Um, okay, so we had a chance to meet up at TCEA last month. Was it this month? <laughs> this yeah, it month. was this month. <laughs> this month. You're right outside of Tyler. You're only you're I am. 60 miles away. How many? Oh. 160. You're pretty close. That's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. And so it's it's nice because we're we're here in Texas, but this will not be just a Texas thing. Oh. Uh, we have other friends that may be joining us later. Um, we have some friends in Florida that may join us and some other friends around the country that should be joining us and maybe even around the world. So I would love to get some folks on here and sharing. And the goal, um, I think our next time, our next go round is going to be Andy sharing. Uh, do you want to go ahead and just let us know ahead of time, Andy, what, what you're going to be doing? Yeah, so we actually have some second grade teachers. So we have just recently redesigned my classroom. I don't know if you guys can see behind me, but we did a lot of different seating, um, and we'll be sharing some of that next week. Um, but we have some second grade teachers who, once they kind of saw um, – my classroom and saw the different options, they just jumped in and um, are going full on flexible seating. So um, they've gotten rid of all of their desks, all of their chairs, all of their tables, and their students are just sitting in whatever they want to sit in, whatever their, makes them comfortable. It has been amazing. So they're going to share next week about how that's working, the challenges, what's working, what's not, and um, just the improvement that they've seen with their students since they've gone to that type of choice seating. So very cool. Yeah, and actually, um, we're hoping Carrie jumps on here soon, and Carrie has started a Google Plus community, and before the end of this time, we're going to go ahead and put that um, inside of our comments. So what I'm going to do is screen share for a second. Actually, is there anything else? Uh, let me go ahead and just screen share right now, and then we'll come back around. Okay, so... What we're looking at is a Google Plus community, and I'm just going to go ahead and look it up because I know that we were invited recently. So, Carrie, up oh, there it is, Carrie, and then I um, can see that this is happening in the Connected Convos community. So, if you are on Google Plus and you wanted to look up a community, it's going to be called Connected Convos, and hopefully. I'm able to join in right now because this just started now, um, and there it is. So I could preview that community right now. It's shared privately, um, and we will be able to post anything that we're doing here in the future. We will post links in here for you to be able to join, so hopefully in the future we can broadcast and have everybody aware of those broadcasts through that Connected Combos Google Plus community. And Carrie's awesome for doing that. I'm going to stop screen sharing because that was horrible. Sorry about that. Um, go ahead. Somebody else? Are we ready to, what are we doing? Are we ready to share our tools or are we? Well, I, I'm guessing so. So, for, you know, a lot of people are probably wondering why we're doing this and how often we're doing this. And I think that's still in question for myself. I don't know how, how often we're going to do this. It's still up in the air, but 
Um, our goal is to try to improve the technology in our classrooms in a flexible way that offers an opportunity for our teachers to go back and view later at their convenience or jump in and be a part of the conversation. But Andy, before you share, I'm going to go ahead and screen share and show how they can be involved right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share one more time because I'm going to show you that when you are on that Google Plus page, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my events, then um, and where is my event? Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my events and I'm going to come to this event and as you're on this page you're able to push play here and you guys are probably already looking at this screen so you're watching us right now and as you're watching you're able to give us some uh, thumbs up hopefully not a lot of thumbs down this is our first go around um, and then up, up at the top if you select from your waffle you're able to select that Q&A and then oh look Fran there she is and Carrie awesome you guys are on there viewing and then we can ask a new question down below so if there's something that you want to ask us that we need to address or any comments feel free to leave them here and then on our end we'll answer them and um, just follow up with you guys about those things so I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and then also stop screen sharing because guess who's with us the lovely Carrie Espen do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself Carrie Oh, we can't hear you. Uh, your mic might be not set with the settings. And while she's doing that, um, each of us are just going to be sharing some technology tools that we're excited about. And um, I hopefully this will be an inspiration for you guys to bring back to your classroom or your teachers or your district and we'd love for you to share as well um, while we're waiting and, and kind of talking we're gonna have that Q&A open and as you guys are asking questions then we're going to um, we're gonna go ahead and answer those and if you have any great tools to recommend we'd love for you to do that and I'm not sure, Carrie, if you're still working on those settings, but Andy, do you want to go ahead and get us started with your technology tools? Um, sure, I'll go first. Um, I am huge on when we share technology to make sure that it's meaningful for our students. Like, I hate to use technology just to use technology. It just doesn't work for me. Hey, Fran. <laughs> um, but I like to use it in a way that's meaningful for my students and in a way that will... Um, engage them in new learning and teaching GT um, that's something I feel like we struggle with a lot of times with those students is letting them experience new learning so sometimes they're in the classroom and they finish early or they um, get something done and they need something else to do instead of um, you know teaching another student or running an errand um, I really am passionate about them ex experiencing new learning and being able to do something different so um, one of the things that I share with our teachers is Dogo News so have you guys heard of Dogo News? Huh. Oh, awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do screen. And share. I'm gonna add it, by the way, Carrie. I'm gonna go ahead and add the things that you guys were mentioning. I'm gonna add it um, inside of our events page for connected combos. And so if you don't mind even spelling that out just so I don't mess that up, that'd be awesome. Uh, it's D O G O N E W S. Is it dogonews.com? Yep. Perfect. Yes. So, let me see if I can open up, hang on. Okay, so I'm going to, okay, can you get, what is happening? Can you see my screen? Uh, yep, you just want to come off and minimize your hangout, and then we'll be able to see everything behind it. Okay, so minimize my hangout, which should be, this should not be hard. What is the problem? There we go. Okay. So, I'm going to open up a new, can I just open up a new um, sure. yeah. tab? Okay, now can you see my screen? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys. This is one of my favorite things to have my students do when we are, um, either they finished early or even in their regular classroom. So this is just a website where they have current events that are appropriate for kids. Um, I would say even junior high kids, this is perfect for them. 
So you can see they have all of these current events, and they're not necessarily things that we would be interested in, um, but some of them are pretty, pretty cool. So they can choose one of the articles. Um, let's say I'm into orangutans, and I want to read about um, this palm oil and orangutans. So you can see there's lots of visuals, lots of media, which is what these kids love. Um, and if the word is blue, they can click it, and it will give them a definition of the word and then my favorite part is if it is I hope they have an example of this um, I'm going to have to show you guys another one but if it is a um, location so if it says Africa or if it says a specific um, country or a specific city they can click on that and it pulls up a map which I think is awesome because I feel like our kids don't get a whole lot of geography um, Anyway, and so to be able to click on a place and actually see where it is in relation to where we live is huge. Um, so they can click on that, and then they can read the article. There's usually a video at the end. They can watch the video, and then down here, they actually have article comprehension questions and a critical thinking challenge. Um, so what I encourage teachers to do is if your students have finished their work early or they need something to do, have this as an option at a computer station and let them go over and choose whatever article they want. Don't choose it for them. Let them pick um, whatever they're interested in. They can read um, the article, watch the video, and then on a note card or on a blog or wherever, they, wherever you want them to document their learning, they can go in and they can answer the article comprehension questions on one side of the note card flip it over and answer the critical thinking challenge. Um, and that's just a great way for them to be able to be learning something new when they're finished with their work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so really I'm a cool. Huge fan of Dogo News. I think it's a great way for our kids to, um, you know, know what's going on in the world, know where places are, learn new vocabulary, and then so cool that they already have the questions written for you and then the critical thinking challenge. So. Um, I'm a fan of Dogo News, and I thought that would be a good thing to share just because I know a lot of times that's a struggle for teachers. Is, um, that you know They have kids finish early, and those kids are either told to read or to sit quietly or to help somebody, so this is a good alternative for that. That's awesome, and it's safe. I mean, yes. I love the fact that it's kid-friendly, but it's something that we know we can send our kids to, and, and there will be a lot of content that they can gather with, in a safe environment. That is really cool. Yes, I am. I really, really, it's been one of my favorites for a long time, so I thought I would share it today. Yes, that's awesome. Do you have any, uh, you know what, Andy, you can't just leave us without showing the awesome technology you have behind you. Uh, oh, Dash and Dot? Yes. Hang on, let me get them. Hi everyone! <laughs> I have visitors. Yay! So here are Dash and Dot. Oh, look, they're talking. Uh, Dash and Dot. I don't know if you guys can see them. Uh, very cool. We just got these. We haven't had them very long. So the kids. Oh, look, he's saying hi. The kids have. Um, they love playing with these, and so we use the iPad, and they code them um, to do whatever they want them to do. They can change the things that they say, they can make them do certain things, uh, all by using the iPad. So it's been it's been really cool. The kids love them. Um, every time they walk in the room, this is the first thing they go to. So um, Dash and Dot from Wonder Workshop, very cool. That is amazing. And by the way, I love the Legos on your oh. wall. That is so fun. Thank you. My husband did that. He did a very good job. That is so cool. What did he make it out of? Um, that is actually fabric and plastic plates. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah, I actually got that idea from somebody on Voxer. She had shared her classroom and had it done in her room. She actually had an entire wall of Legos, which is what I wanted to do, but my husband said, uh, no, we're going to do this little bit, and this is going to be it. So uh, we did, and I think it looks really good. So, yeah, it's just fabric and plastic plates that are hot glued to the fabric. That is wonderful. Love it. And I love the furniture you have in there. Very kid-friendly, yeah. wonderful so we furniture. Just, we just got these in today. I don't know if you guys can see that. These are the, the chairs. Yeah. See the node chairs. So we just got those in today. So I'm very excited about those. Um, the kids got to sit in them this morning. We had a breakfast. And it has an iPad holder and a drink holder. So very cool. What about the the wheels? I know that's always a, a big question mark for teachers. Like, oh, they're going to be rolling around everywhere. What do you think? Well, they do kind of roll around everywhere, but I'm okay with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just a matter of you letting go and being okay with that. Like, I'm okay with them 
moving around as long as it's at an appropriate time. And I think I think we've built a culture uh, to where they know you know what's appropriate and what's not, and that if they can't use it appropriately, then um, you know they'll have to make other choices. But um, I'm okay with them rolling around as long as they're rolling around to collaborate or they're rolling around to communicate with another student about what we're doing. Um, so I think as long as you lay that foundation and they know your expectations, who cares if they're rolling around, right? As long as they're taking care of business. <laughs> That's so awesome. All right, I'm going to stop presenting you out to everyone so it will pick up whoever's talking, but uh, would anybody else like to volunteer their technology tools? Actually, we have two more. Okay, so we have Fran here joining us. Oh, I see Lisa. She's like, me! Um, so Fran is here. Fran, would you like to introduce yourself? And then hopefully we'll be able to get Carrie to introduce herself as well. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just muted yourself. Try that one more time. There we go. Okay. Hi there, I'm Fran Syracusa and I'm an educational technologist down here in Florida. Um, and uh, I'm just here to kind of listen in and possibly share some tools today. And I'm really interested in anything that has to do with global projects. So I am always looking for new fun tools that you can use um, in any productive or creative way, but especially to collaborate with others. Um, but even sometimes that just means sharing back and forth the digital artifact that you create. So just Very excited to cool. be here. So I love it. Hopefully I can share something today. <laughs> yes. Okay. We have the lovely Carrie, who actually is the founder of this Connected Combos. So hopefully we can hear her. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yay, okay. So I'm Carrie Espin, and I'm the Instructional Technologist at China Spring ISD, which is near Waco, Texas. And um, this is my second year in this position. Before this, I taught high school special ed for six years. And Jamie and I were just chit-chatting while uh, Lisa was partying at TCEA during the <laughs> social. <laughs> and I, I was losing my voice at the time, but I'm glad we got to chat because we talked about what are some great ways that we can reach out to the teachers and help them get connected with other teachers and thus began this quest and it's been the heart of, of pretty much anybody who's leading teachers to be able to connect them with others that are doing the same thing and um, I've been a part of the EdCamp Global and the EdCamp Global Classrooms and I'm excited about the makerspace and Lisa and Andy and I are doing EdCamp Hot Again this summer so we're doing everything that we can to connect teachers around the world and I'm excited that I got to meet Fran virtually through the EdCamp Global Classrooms and we'll see who else we get to meet through this adventure. Yay, that's awesome. All right, um, I think I may have seen Lisa's hand go up first. So, you know, to be fair, I think Lisa's next in line to share her technology tools. Yay, I like to share. <laughs> okay, I'm going to uh, turn my, oh, okay, I'm presenting to everyone. Not sure what that means. I'm going to screen share my entire screen okay so here we go the first tool that I really like is Tricider it is a really cool tool in that it lets you vote things up or down and so let me tell you kind of what my thoughts were on this um, you can always look for anticipation guides online um, what I would have students do would be to come in and let me see if I can just share this out um, I'm going to try to see if I can paste the link. Um, let me copy and paste it in for you real quick. And so my thought on this one was to actually have students, I'm going to put it in the chat, is to ask them a question before they read the chapter. So they would come in and say, um, you know, which one of these do you agree the most with? And that's the one you vote. And so you just click to vote it up or down. It's very similar to Reddit or other um, social sites in that manner. And then you can actually have them add an argument to it of why they feel that way. Or if we have already read the text, maybe is there something in the text that reinforces that idea or makes you change your mind? And so with a traditional anticipation guide, you would ask them, you know, do you agree with this comment or do you disagree? Now we read the text and then now we come back to, okay, did you, did you change your mind afterward? And so I thought this would be a really cool way of kind of um, doing that anticipation guide. 
let me go back to the other way also would be more of a formal assessment uh, type of uh, quick check for understanding. So maybe we're reading Julius Caesar now. Um, and in Act 3, this is where we really start drawing the lines between which side are you on, whose side are you on, uh, Brutus or Mark Antony. So at this point in our story, whose side are you on or who is the hero in this aspect and why do you feel that way? Okay, now let's actually read the scene or the act and see what happens and let's come back and see if we've changed our minds. So Tricider just looks like a really neat um, tool that you can use, like I said, for just a quick on the fly um, check for understanding or check for or almost establishing the purpose for the reading. Another tool that I like a lot is Quizalize. Um, my teachers have went crazy with Kahoot, and so in looking for um, options for Kahoot, I came across Quizalize. What I like about Quizalize is the data that you get from this. Not only does it give you a team view of you know where you are in relation to your peers, but if you keep on coming down at the teacher dashboard, it puts the students in tiers for you and so you can see which students you might need to go back and reteach that concept or which students need that concept um, you know taught differently or spiral back through I also liked with Quizalize it will tell you how they did on certain questions and so this is just the data that we normally kind of miss with Kahoot or Quizzes or Classkick or some of the other um, quiz tools and so you can look and see which question they really struggled with or which um, standard that like I said you might need to go back and uh, review whole class versus pulling a small group so I really like this tool for just simply the data that you get from it it's just really really good data to use for um, differentiating your instruction and then the last tool that I wanted to share is this Bitmoji. This is by Bitstrips. It allows you to create your own emoji. And I know there are so many classrooms using um, gamification or badges or any kind of um, intrinsic and extrinsic um, motivation. And so you can download this on the App Store or on the Google Play Store. And it allows you to really customize your own avatar. And so that's really nice, especially um, here at Waco ISD, we have students from diverse backgrounds. And so just to be able to really um, get an avatar that you know looks like them is, is really, really nice. So those were just some of the tools that, um, that I just came across and wanted to, wanted to share. So I'm going to go ahead and and I'm not sharing my screen, or now I am. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm doing now. <laughs> That's okay. Um, just so you guys are aware, I'm just going to share this real quick. All right. Can you guys see my screen okay? But no, I, I need to push it out. Let me give me one second. Okay, perfect. All right, so just so you guys are aware, on our events page, I'm going in and adding the links for the different sites that are being discussed. And so feel free to go in there and ask questions or if you have anything more to add in these groups or any of you guys that are on the event, uh, in our chat right now, any of you guys, any of you ladies um, would like to add w any more information that we can include in here to help people utilize these tools, that would be awesome. And I'm going to stop screen sharing here. Perfect. All right. Um, I don't see any hands, but um, I'm guessing, because I don't see Carrie, but I do see Fran. Fran, are you ready to share some technology tools with us? I'm trying, I was more prepared to do it on an iPad, so I'm trying to figure out which of these tools also works on the computer. So if, if somebody else wants to go first, then I can hop on in a couple minutes. All right, Carrie, I see your hand. <laughs> You're muted, but I see you. That's okay. I'm actually oh, on good. video on my computer, but I'm on audio on my phone. Awesome. So you can hear me and see me, right? Yes. Okay, great. Good. Well, okay, this last six weeks, um, I shared with my teachers about clickers, and it's with a P, as in Paul, clickers instead of clickers. So a lot of people have already heard about this. But what I like about Clickers is that it's a low-tech tool. And, oh, sorry, that's the bell. I actually am housed in the middle school, so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
All right. Um, so I want to show that to you. Just a second. Let me screen share this with you. Okay, so can you see the Plickers homepage here? Yes. Okay, great. What I love about Plickers, like I said, is very low tech. So as long as the teacher has a mobile device, either um, iOS or Android, they can scan the room and collect data from the students. So a lot of times they say for a formative assessment or just to give immediate feedback from your students, you do like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But then there's no way to track that data. So what I love about Plickers is that you actually give each student their own card. And you can see on this card it has a number. And for each class period you can use the same set of cards, but each student is assigned a number. And on here are the letters A, B, C, and D. So if I wanted to answer B, I would make sure the card was held up this way. So whatever letter is on top is the answer that, that I want to um, choose based on the teacher's question. So what I love about it is then the teacher then takes their mobile device and they scan the whole room and they collect the answers from the students. And it's a great way for you to set it up and to be able to see in live time who got it right, who got it wrong, where is everybody at on this specific topic. And, um, sorry, let me go back to this. Let me go into my question. And some of the questions that I thought were a great way to do this were, you know, how could you use Plickers in the classroom? And one way that I came up with is you can do it as warm-up exercises. Or like when they first come in, be ready, have a question on the board, and they have to be ready to answer it. Or an exit ticket before they go out of the classroom. Another way is in the middle of the classroom, they or in the middle of the lesson, they could ask for to see if they understood it. So do you understand what a pun is? So a lot of times when you ask that question to your students, you're like, uh, sure, yeah, I guess. You don't really get good feedback. But this way you could say, yes, I'd like to give an example, which then lets you know what student would be great to call on. Yes, maybe, or just plain no. And you can also include images with your picture, which is great uh, for prompts. And then also what's new for Plickers is called score sheet. They only came out with this probably two or three weeks ago, and what I had always told my uh, teachers was, is that Plickers was just more, not for data, but just for, uh, just a quick assessment. But now that they've done uh, score sheets, which I don't, apparently don't have any data, I just did the other day, sorry about that, um, you can actually choose the questions that you want to use and create a grade. So if you do questions for, um, let's say five questions for the week, right? And you have, maybe you ask 10, but you only want to choose certain five. So you would then go into your score sheet and, I'm sorry, let me try demo class. This is not longer than a month. They don't like that. Okay. All right. So when you go in, and I am so sorry that this is just not providing the information that we need right now. No, that's fine. Okay. So here are some questions that I took, and these are just sample, just with a few teachers. At the top, you choose which questions you want to include in the grade and which questions you don't want to include in the grade. So it's a great way to get a, a weekly grade for uh, your exit tickets, um, or you could do like a little four question multiple choice quiz after a unit. I wouldn't suggest going more than five questions at a time because the kids just get tired of holding up their cards and then teachers are having to scan it every single time. So I would limit it to three to five questions at a time, but ideally I see it as a teacher using it at the beginning of class, middle, of class and end of class. So that's that's the tool that I wanted to share. That's very cool. And how many teachers do you think would be able to jump in on this like day one they'd be able to use it? Oh immediately like any teacher can. Um, it is so simple to set up when you go into your classes you add a new class and you go ahead and give it a name 
but then when you're ready to add your students, you click on Add Roster, and so you can download your uh, class roster from your gradebook and paste the names in here and press Save, and then Plickers will automatically assign them a card. And what I love about it is that the account is free and the cards are free. So you can go into Plickers.com, sign up, and download these cards and print off as many sets as you want. They just say print them on white pieces of paper. Um, my teachers laminate, but they encourage not to laminate just because the glare could cause a misread. Um, and then I would cut them down to a square. That way students are like, oh, well, if I hold it horizontally, you know, it's either A or C, you know. Um, I would just cut it into a square. And so once you get your kids enrolled, you can just go into Plickers and go into your library and start adding questions. And when you add your new question, you can make a multiple choice or true false. And then you choose which one is correct. And then when you are ready to um, assess your students, you uh, download the app on your mobile device, choose the question, and then you would project this on the board. And whenever you um, put a question on your app, it shows up here. So it doesn't show the, stu the student's answers unless you want it to, and it doesn't show the right answer. So it is a combo, so you use your computer and you use your mobile device. Very cool, that's awesome. All right, Fran, are you ready to go? I think so. All right, okay. you're live. And you can hear me fine, right? Yes. Okay, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Tiny Tap, um, but that's the one I'm gonna be doing. Jamie, have you heard of Tiny Tap? I haven't. Oh good, something new. Um, Tiny Tap is something that um, another teacher uh, showed me a couple years ago, and usually I use it on um, the iPad, but um, you can also just show it on the screen, so that's what I'm going to do in a second. But basically, you can take anything that's like a text-based lesson and convert it into an interactive activity. So I don't know if you can see this. This is really, really fun. So if you just hit the plus sign, and it gives you this whiteboard here, and you can add any picture or writing or anything that you want, and you go ahead and you place it on the page as you like, and then you can literally type questions and say questions, and then mark the area that would be right or wrong, and it'll make sounds whether you get it right or wrong. So I'm going to show you how I use this in a Spanish class for vocabulary. So um, what you can do, you don't have to play it on the iPad. You can also play it on the computer. So if I want to share my screen, what's the one I'm going to click on again? You oh, said? Up, at the, up at the top left, uh, your, mm -hmm. it's a green button, screen green. share. And you'll yes. the full screen. Okay, so choose full screen. And then you could just minimize your Hangout. Okay, so click on desktop? Yeah. Okay, clicking on desktop. Start screen share, and then minimize this Hangout. Yep. Perfect. Okay. And then we get to see your That's awesome desktop back. I know. It's a mess. <laughs> um, the only bad thing now, I wasn't ready to, um, hold on. So I need to go to my um, mail to go grab it. Okay. So, for example, I was doing a lesson on vocab for Cinco de Mayo. And then the other thing that's really cool is with my middle schoolers, I would have them create this. So, um, okay, Let's see if you can hear this. You guys can still see this, right? Yes. Okay, so what's going on is. Que foto significa el presidente? And so what I do, you had to listen to it and say which one was the president. La celebración. So the child here is saying la celebración. So you would pick, you know, which one it would be. So if la you, celebración. Let's say I pick this one. Uh-oh. So do you see how it, it corrected you? ¿Dónde está Puebla? Okay, so ¿dónde está Puebla? Where is the city of Puebla? So I'm pretty sure this is it. And you can designate how, if you want to say correct, or, la banda mariachi? or a sound or something. So that one just said, you know, where's the mariachi band? So when you create it, you literally go around a certain area and you kind of um, 
you know, like fill it in of like if they tap somewhere in this area. So like, ¿Quién está one. feliz? So this one's saying like who's happy. So. So that's another example. So all I did was take one picture. ¿Quién está is, feliz? Instead of posting a whole bunch of pictures like on the last one, this is one that I just found, and I'm asking about you know who's happy. So. So you could create this um, tiene el pelo largo? for, you know, um, a little one, or you could have the kids create it themselves. ¿Quién? So what I'm going to do is tiene? I'm going to go back to my inbox, and here's another, um, someone made a tiny tap on 16 ways to use tiny tap in 2016. So if we look at this one real quick. Happy New Year. Here are 16 ways to use TinyTap in 2016. Number 1. Blended Learning. Get students creating technology instead of just consuming it. Instead of assigning them a TinyTap lesson to play, assign them a TinyTap lesson to create. It will help keep them focused and accountable. Just prepare a brief call to... So over here on the side, you can see all the different pages. So this could also be used as another way, like a fancier way to do um, presentations. And like I you know, said before, either a teacher can use it or a student could use it. And um, like I said, it's just really, really interactive. So you're taking something that could be you know, flat and just you know, make it creative. So I'm going to go back. Um, really cool. Okay, so we're, okay, let me find you guys. So how can I stop screen sharing? Okay, um, up at the top left. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So do you guys have any questions? Oh, that was awesome. And that was really cool. That was really cool. What do you think um, teachers, or how would teachers use this the most in the classroom? For small group instruction or individual student assignments, how do you see that looking in the classroom? You could do either because um, if you look at it right here, there's share right here. So what you could do is if you had a place where you had all your assignments, you could um, share it out and then everybody who had their own device could work on it at their own pace. Or if you had, um, you know, groups of people, small groups, they could, you know, just play with one. And then that's nice too because then they can collaborate and make it together. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. I love this idea. I'm totally stealing it. Um, the I could totally see using this for um, stations or centers, having kids come through, identifying everything from parts of speech to capitals and states and parts of the world. I mean, this is a great, I can see this as a center for almost every content, every grade level. Thank you. This is, I'm, I'm writing this down right now. This is awesome. What I did, and I'll share this another time, um, going off of English teachers who created task cards, this used to be one of my task cards. So what I would do is I would have the vocab list or I'd have a, you know, even that was differentiated and different students, like three different groups would get three different um, vocab words, but they were all related. And each of them would pick one task card and do something with the vocabulary. But basically they would create something tech-wise or paper-wise, and then after two days, on the third day, everyone would play everyone else's creations. And so the creating a tiny tap was one of the um, task cards, so they enjoyed that. That's but, pretty yeah. awesome. So. That is really cool, Fran. How easy is this to use and just pick up and start working with? Oh, super easy. Like literally, um, if it's back on me, you know, if you, let me see, Jamie, can you put it back on me? Yes, it is on you. Oh, it is? I'm sorry. No, that's so, okay. Like I said, it's kind of hard because I'm holding like the iPad here, but um, if I go to my camera roll, for example, or if I want to take a picture of you guys even, you know, right now. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and then use the photo. Is it showing me large? On my end, it's showing me, or on your end, but for everybody yeah. else, is everybody else seeing Fran, or am I just crazy? I see Fran. Oh, okay. you do? Okay, good. That one didn't turn out, so let me go grab something different. <laughs> um, but, you know, for example, you could take a picture of the class, and it could be something fun where they have to ask questions, like, who am I? 
and you could do something real, you know, because you can put anything you want in here. So, um, I mean, here's another language one. And also, you can you can kind of see um, things don't go straight on. It's pretty, um, you know, you can play with it. You can decorate it. You can draw on it. You can type on it. Um, so it's giving you options here. The kids get it, you know, instantly. You can change colors. So... I really like this, Fran, because every time I talk to teachers who are just getting started using the iPad with their students, they mention, oh, well, we love pic collage, and pic collage lets you just put all these pictures together, but really this tiny tap can now make it more interactive. So I think it's a great, a great app. Or Is this an app or a website? This is an app, but there is a, I guess on the website, that's where you can view it and play it, but I think you have to create it on the iPad. Okay. That is so, really cool. Um, but I just love that, you know, having the, the listening part and the speaking part on it, too. And the kids, you know, you've made a lesson into a game because they think it's so much fun to, like, even to press the wrong one to hear the goofy sounds that they, and then they can control the sounds that it makes for the errors or, so, um, trying to see. It even, uh, right here, too, it says search for images online. So that's another thing, too. Um, so I guess you just have to make sure, you know, that you have, like, a firewall or something um, to make sure that nothing funny comes up. Or um, <laughs> you can even just tell the kids, you know, they have to use the ones that they, maybe they, if you have a website already of some clip art, then they have to use those that goes with the vocab. But, you know, it's, it's going to be... Um, it can be a majorly tiered task because they have to choose their words and then figure out the appropriate pictures, figure out the questions that they're going to do, how they're going to arrange it all, and then being able to share it out to others. So That's pretty awesome. Um, it's and, super easy. <laughs> you know, um, I'm kind of clicking through people. Who do you guys see on the main screen right now? Um, uh, Fran. You still see Fran? Okay. How about I right now? I see Amy, or I see um, the picture of the the family picture. Okay, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's me. <laughs> that's the Carrie. Other me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and present myself to everyone now this time around. Um, and funny thing is, is I probably. I would like for it to just kind of flow with whoever's talking, but while we're doing this, I was doing the present to everyone. FYI, if you guys do a Google Hangout on air, just realize you don't get it back. It's like if you start telling who's going to present, you're the you're the one that's going to be showing who's presenting from now on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do some screen sharing here because unless there's anybody else that has anything to add before I share my tech. No, go for it. Okay, great. Um, so um, I am going to go ahead and do my screen sharing. I'm going to minimize my Hangout. And just so you guys know, in case you have any questions or anything else, when you guys are clicking on there and you guys are watching what's going on, feel free to add questions over here on the right. Um, we will answer those questions or we'll add them to the list of different things that we're talking about. And then you can always give us a little thumbs up. I see a couple viewers on there, so feel free. Um, you can't give us a thumbs down though, so that's just, you know, that's off limits. Wouldn't that be awesome if we could just turn that feature off? Um, but I wanted to share a couple things with you guys. First, I'm going to share our Hangout, um, which is really interesting because I'm going to use a feature and it looks awful right now. So just realize it's going to change a little bit. I'm going to open up an app called The Story Before Bedtime. And this, I think that a lot of people don't realize this is available. Can you guys see this okay? Perfect. So a lot of people don't realize that this is available. It looks funny and it's bringing it up here because um, I'm screen sharing. But this typically this screen would be down here inside of the iPad. But let's say there's somebody that you want to encourage to read. Um, or somebody maybe overseas, you know, in the military, some, you know, you have a parent overseas that wants to be able to do a bedtime story with their kids. And this particular app, app that's included within the Google Hangouts, you can open it up by going to here and adding apps. And so if I were to add apps, I would be able to see um, this option here. And I'm going to make my screen a little bit larger, okay. So um, I would be able to go and search for it by adding apps here. And this one's called the story before bed. 
and there is a bookshelf of different books and you can absolutely submit new books and recommendations but there's a bookshelf of different books that are available that you can select so um, we can do the nobody likes a caterpillar in their tea you know so if I were to select that book it shows up here the person that I'm speaking to whether it be one person or all of you guys if I were having you guys um, share right now then you would show up here and we would be able to read the book together actually I did this at TCEA a couple weeks ago with my seven-year-old so she was really upset that I was gone and so I got on here and she read me um, a book and so at one point she was like okay I'm done reading can you just read because they were just too hard of words um, which was fine but it got her we were able to read a story together even though I was you know miles away from her I was still able to connect with her and do something that she loves doing and so by coming through this book though one of us can read and click through the book and the visuals are much better so Fran was trying to show a picture of her iPad um, which made it hard for us to be able to see everything that was going on because she's holding it up to a screen same thing would apply to a book but the nice thing about this is that the visuals are just so clear for both people watching and viewing and I've even thought this would be and I know this is in our teaks here in Texas but you know having um, a maybe an older student read to a younger student that be a project that they're um, allowing the younger student even to read to an older student um, but connecting one campus to another maybe a high school down to an elementary campus and them having a chance to be able to read a book together allowing the student to select a different book according to what they feel most comfortable with and then being able to have a Google Hangout even though we can't bring the high school students to the elementary campus maybe for funding or time or whatever it might be let's bring it to the classroom by having a Google Hangout and now we have an opportunity of allowing this collaboration and support to come from these different grade levels um, to support one another in reading so I just think what a cool opportunity I know that they really made it for maybe grandparents reading to grandchildren but what a great educational opportunity we have to be able to allow our students to um, connect and um, with people all over the world really we can read books in different languages essentially so that's really neat so I like that and it is called a story before bed and it does require both people to have that app inside of their app so if I'm the only one doing it the way I'm getting around it right now is by screen sharing so it allows us to be able to see this together um, which works but if I'm not uh, you know what I have tr actually I had my girls do this together they were reading a book to each other off of an iPad um, so they were able to go on the Google Hangout from their iPad Fran just asked a question mm -hmm. um, saying are they able to mirror um, from an iPad and absolutely you can do that but you don't even need to mirror because if you're only viewing on an iPad on the Google Hangouts on air you're able to see this as well and so um, you would add the apps here and then it would give you a list of all the different apps that are available and there it is a story before bed uh, for hangouts so you can add to the video call and there you know at that point be able to use it in the future so of course there's other apps that you can add in there as well there's some really fun ones um, but I think that one is an educational component that we should really be looking into especially talking about global learning so um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this one but I'm going to I'm going to continue screen sharing because the next part that I want to show you guys and um, this is you know everybody knows I'm going to talk about this because I'm just so stinking passionate about virtual reality right now and one of the amazing tools out there that I think is so accessible and easy to use immediately is um, within Nearpod so I use Nearpod I actually realized this a minute ago but I used Nearpod back in 2012 and had an account that I just opened up accidentally a minute ago and I'm like wait where's all my stuff where's my lessons and then I realized oh I'm in a very very old account that I was using to show people how to use Nearpod back in the day so um, here though within Nearpod they now have the VR component which is 
amazing. I just love that. And so it's super easy. It is a an image that you can view, but I thought, you know what? This is an opportunity for people to be able to join in and be a part of this. So, hey, why not? If you're on a computer, it works. It's just hard to get it to work. The better option is to use a device. So I don't know if you guys want to jump on with me and watch, but I'm going to go ahead and um, show you my lessons. And um, my library has things that I've borrowed from other people or shared with me, and then also the things that I've created myself. And I'm going to go ahead and um, I guess I'll share, let's go ahead and share this one with you guys. So this particular session is live right now. It's a VR session, and on my screen you can see share this pin with your audience. So if you're on nearpod.com, you would be able to type this in by joining a session, or you can um, also type that in in a Nearpod app, which is probably the better way of viewing the VR experience. And then I'm also going to take this link here. I can share it on social media, so I can send this out on Twitter right now and say, hey guys, join my VR adventure. So I just send it out as myself on Twitter. But I'm also going to um, give a shout out on Google Plus, and I'm going to take this off of this public, and I'm going to look at connected convos and I'm adding it to our um, Google Plus community so I've, I was able to share that and then I'm going to take that link even still and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in our chat right now because you guys oh just kidding let me try that one more time okay just to make sure paste okay there we go. And then I'm going to share that right now so people can join in and participate in this just by going to any of those areas. And in my lesson here, though, I have complete control. So as you are watching this or participating, if you guys are on here right now, you'd be able to see this screen. And then I would be able to click to the next slide and it would pull you in. Is everybody else seeing that okay? Mm hmm Okay. I'm showing my screen so that they can see what it looks like on the iPad, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to push play here, um, and I just think this is hilarious. This lady just cracks me up, um, and my sound is actually going on, but she is experiencing VR for the first time, and you'll see her just getting a kick. She can't figure it out. She's like, what is going on? <laughs> okay, so um, with that, you guys could see the video is just hilarious, and I it was shared, and I wish I could quote who it was shared with me from. Um, there's a lot of videos out there about VR and how people are responding to that. Let me go ahead and go back to our hangout here. All right, I'm going to uh, stop presenting and hopefully just. I'm going to try this one more time so that you guys can see me. Okay, and I'm going to take this off. There we go. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and screen share one more time. Okay, so here is that video that you guys should be able to see on your own screen. You guys should be able to watch with me. And she is just absolutely having a blast watching VR for the very first time. I mean, she almost falls over. I mean, they get worried about her safety. So that was pretty awesome. Um, but that is what our kids can be experiencing right now. Can everybody see that screen okay? I think everybody's yeah. muted. Okay. Okay, awesome. All right, and so when I go to the next screen, though, I see right now, have you ever played with virtual reality before? And there's people that have already started responding. And I did put this out as homework. I can control this and have done this um, with you guys and controlled what slide you're on and what you're viewing. Um, but we can go through and see, okay, yeah, there's been a few people. All right, we see Lakita. Um, thank you for joining in. And she's, nope, not at all. So you get to experience it best on a mobile device. I would recommend using a mobile device if you're going to do that. Um, 
if you use it on a computer it's possible and I'll show you why I don't recommend it because you guys get to see this on my end but hopefully those of you guys that are watching right now you're viewing on your end and you're on a mobile device um, so as you're viewing this though you can see my screens black and your screen is not so let me go ahead and do my fisheye view I'm going to change my views and hopefully it pulls it up normal view and so my screen is black your screen should not be you guys should be oh there it goes okay so you can see it's a little finicky even if I downloaded the right software to look at it on my computer I'm able to click and drag and look anywhere that I want to look though you guys can see oh there's his missing leg we're looking at a photo that was taken at a 360 photo so they are taking capturing several different photos and stitching it all together and you can see we are located at a special place here and as I go through, I could say, all right, after you've had this experience on a device looking around, I just turn my device around and it picks up where I'm looking instead of clicking and dragging. The next question is, where do you think we went? And so now we can start saying, okay, well, Carrie said that we went C. Carrie, what was C? What was that response? The Tower of Pisa. All right. All right. So if you guys don't know, I know that one was a little tough because you really can't see it leaning. It's funny because you think, oh, oh, you that would be obvious. Well, from the pictures we see, it is obvious. But when you're sitting there right in front of it, it's a little harder to see. So you can answer that one. And then as I go through my next picture, I love, love, love going in the sea. I think that's just my favorite thing with VR. Um, but being able to go down and look and detail all these different pictures and visuals. I think they've done a great job at pulling in these visuals. Actually, they're working um, from a website, I believe it's 360 Street, and uh, they're able to pull in several different things that we want to have included. And so you can go through and have multiple questions for your students and asking them questions. And as I'm going through, I'm just pulling in different characteristics uh, or different features like activities, um, you know, oh, I love this one. I just had to throw in something fun. Okay, so I can say, oh, where did I see that? Okay, perfect. That one's done. And um, there we go. And so I'm just trying to solve this and um, trying to solve this here. And then I can be done with it. And look, it took me 12 moves. So I like that I can pull in content as well as pulling them into this VR experience. And I'm going to go back and go back in. And hopefully it will pull it in. You guys seeing this okay? Yeah, Jamie. And what I really love about this Nearpod experience, um, whether or not people are on it or not, is when you play the video, it doesn't automatically play for me. So I could watch it at my own pace. Or when you're moving through the 360 picture, I can go whichever direction I want to on the picture. So it allows for that interaction or for that individuality uh, for the students, for them to explore on their own. That is so true. That's one of the things that I love about VR is it could be a different experience every single time. So I could be watching just this view Whereas the next time I come in, maybe I'm really focusing in on maybe some restaurants or, you know, architecture or lighting the next time I come in and how that works. So I can, every time I come into the same 360 photo, which is just a static photo, but it is a very cool experience for our kids to have that individualized learning experience. You're exactly right. Okay, here we go. Fill in the blanks, and I just gave everyone the answer. So if you can't get that right. I don't know what to say for that. <laughs> I think you guys can do it. I believe in you. All right. So then you guys could see that the questions, though, are um, pulled down, and you have to pick up and pull in the right place. And so that allows us to kind of um, label with fill in the blanks, which is kind of fun. Very, very, very easy to do all of this, by the way. Jamie? Guys, yeah. Did you, so you created that fill in the blank yourself? Yeah, I just typed it in, and I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to use some of these tools because I think most people think that this is going to be difficult, and it was so, so easy. Yes. So this is an interactive feature within Nearpad? Mm-hmm, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And so um, here's the next one. And so as we're going through, we're recognizing, why are they all painted white? Obviously, this isn't the US. We can recognize that some of these things don't look familiar to us, maybe um, signs that we may see, and making some predictions based upon what we're viewing. Uh, beautiful, beautiful area. And then I can say, draw a star of the location you think we visited. And so I'm waiting. Carrie and Lakita and Jessica and Fran. So you guys are on there right now participating here. So once you guys are done with your drawing, you'll submit it and then I can actually share it out with the group. So here's the drawing that I just received. And you guys could see that she's saying, oh, I think that might be right there. Okay, and then I come over here and I see a star right here, Fran. You're so good. You know, don't you? And so <laughs> I can go through and just as I'm waiting all these responses, but let's say, Fran, good job. I can share and then that shares with all of you. So as you're working on it, I can then say, hey, wait, guys, look, why do you think Fran selected that spot right there? And so you can go through and um, do you plan to use VR in the future? And so you guys would answer yes or maybe. Uh, no, that's just not for me. Um, and so I can go through and say, all right, um, this is the responses that we're getting from people. And I'm watching this live. I can actually control this on my phone or my computer. And you guys are all responding individually as students. So I'm pulling in not just the VR component, but I'm also pulling in, you know, the, for me, professional development component of showing a tool that has multiple features in here. And it's really taking them to be intent on what they're watching. Okay, draw a picture of where you would like to go. And so you guys would go through that and actually draw in and say, hmm, I want to go to the beach or I want to go to, I want to go camping or I want to, you know, go to a monument. Um, wherever you're drawing it and just des describing. So I see something here from Fran. Oh, where do you guys think she wants to go? So then I can get asked the class then. All right, what do you guys think? You guys could see that right now? Where do you guys think that is? Does it look like she wants to go on a ropes course <laughs> I know. or up a ladder? Or does she want to go to the Eiffel Tower? So, you know, we can go through and uh, we can talk about how all of that looks. And, you know, that would be the end of that session. So Jamie, how can I add one thing? Yeah. Can And everyone can hear me too, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know if people... Um, if you've never used Nearbod before, um, when Jamie was going through and she chose my picture, me as a student, what we're looking at on is her screen. So this is the teacher screen. So she can see all the students. But the other students, when she shared out my picture, it did not have my name. So this is sometimes a way for students to feel more comfortable interacting in a classroom because of the um, they're anonymous. And you know, a teacher could use someone's picture as an example, but you know, unless the teacher says something aloud to the class, no one would ever know whose picture that was. So I think that's a really awesome thing about Nearpod. And I'm going to show you in two minutes how to do this. You collect, you select new presentation. I can add a slide. So a slide might be uh, my first slide describing. So I might say, here's my first slide. Hello, folks. And then I can go through and add it or take it away if I don't want to have anything. And then I can pull from images either from my computer, my drive, or even doing search. Um, and so I can look up a search uh, using Google Images. So it's pulling from content that I'm able to use. And so I'm just going to say hello. And then I'm going to look and see what they have on there. And I can say, OK, that's the image that I want to have in the back. And I choose save. And so that first one's pretty easy, a slide. And then from there, I'm building. So I can add web content, and that would pull in a URL. And I can also add an activity. And that is the stuff that I was adding in between. So if you guys see here, I added the memory test, the fill in the blank. And I'll show you how to do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and choose what kind of you know, what, which one I want to use. Let's say I use this. And now I can type in here, type here, fill in here, and so I can say next, and it says click on the word on the right to add to your word bank, so I can click fill in here, so I just selected those words, and I chose done, and now that's an activity where they would have to pull those words in the right spot, 
super, super fun, easy, way, way easy way to assess our students. And so hopefully let's refresh that page. And so um, with that, I can add then my VR content by adding content and coming over here to field trips so easy and initially when you get in here you think oh there's a lot in there uh, there's not that much but you know we'll work with it but you also have your search feature where you can say I want to go to Mars and so when I choose Mars then I can say okay well here we are here is some images that we can pull from in Mars and I can say let me preview this so I can go in here and look and see what that 360 will look like um, again, it's powered by 360 cities, and um, it's not a little finicky on a computer, very easy on your phone. Um, but I can go through and say done, and once I say done, now that's pulled in. And so all I'm doing is going from slide to slide and allowing them to interact either on their time and going the slide to slide that they want to or as a whole class activity that I'm controlling where they're at and we're having discussions in between these activities. So um, that is an amazing tool that most people are not aware of and ThingLink just started some VR stuff that they're in beta right now. So ThingLink is doing some 360 photos. Can I show you guys this or does anybody? If you need to leave, I'm so sorry. I got to show you this because it's just so stinking cool. Um, but ThingLink is you know, a way for you to take some photos and add some interaction and um, you can go in there and click on these different areas and then things will pop up, right? Well, now they're looking at it and they're saying, hey, no, now let's add in the 360. So when they click in that area, then they're able to see the 360 view. And I'm, I'm surprised they don't even have it right here because I think that would have been something that they would have had up right off the bat. But they are in, it is in beta that you can sign up for it. And it is a very cool thing that they're doing. Here it goes. So you guys can see that while they're in there interacting, they, they can go and touch these areas and then look, it pulls up and then all of a sudden you're there inside of a room. So it's like how amazing is that to be able to interact with different parts in a 360 view. So um, thing link, and I heard that from Kim. I've just, everybody's been just pouring in with all these different tools. So it's been really cool to see this VR community build up. Oh, okay. Create, okay, so there is, yeah, there is, okay, she, she Fran has bubbly on there. And so um, creating your own 360 photos, there's a lot out there that you can do that in. I know people are using the Google, Google camera, you could do it within 360 um, cities and bubbly and sphere. So there's a bunch out there. And I also have some stuff that I have linked in the community on my Twitter account, on my Twitter page as well. So if you're looking to incorporate VR, there's so much that is pulling in right now. It's amazing. So um, I'd love to share or anything that you think should be added, just let me know and I'll certainly do that. Okay, I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> The screen See, that was awesome. I mean, you just It's hard to, to cut those descriptions short because there is so much to them that the teachers can do with them. And it's becoming to where nothing's going to be impossible to do inside your own classroom. And it's, it's fantastic. It's phenomenal. It's, it's great for the students to be able to know that there is a world out there outside their little house or their little home where they are. They can go out into the world. So thanks for sharing that. Definitely. Um, I think we're at the point now where we're ready to end. I know that we had talked about possibly doing this weekly, possibly doing this monthly. I know that um, our next big time is Andy sharing flexible learning spaces and she'll be sharing from a teacher's classroom and what she'll be doing with that. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to, Andy, um, so she'll be able to share that when, Andy. Uh, and Mondays are good for me, so let's okay. plan on uh, Monday. 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 Yeah. This. <laughs> I have visitors in my room right Hi. now. Um, uh, Monday. Let's just do Monday at noon again. That works. Okay. okay. I'll get with the teachers and then we'll tweet it out or whatever we need to do. Okay. And Andy, Andy, can you tell us just a little bit more about what you're going to be doing? Yeah, I shared a little bit at the beginning, but our second grade teachers are have gone full on flexible seating. So. Um, 
going to be sharing their classrooms and they're going to be sharing the challenges that they've had with that as well as the success and how they've seen students react. It's been huge. So you guys are not going to want to miss it. It's going to be really cool. That sounds awesome. Um, is there anything else anybody? Oh, Fran, I see your finger up. <laughs> if, um, if, if 12 o'clock works for Erin Galley over here in Clearwater, she'll show her version of flexible seating in the room too. That would be really cool. I think it would be cool to hear like the classes on how different that can look and maybe allow them to kind of collaborate on some of the things that they've done. That would be really neat. Sure. And if they can't, I'll get a little video or a bubbly or something so that at least I can share on her behalf. That would be awesome. Carrie, do you have anything that you want to add? No, that's good. I'm super excited. I think this went well. We'll send a recap of what are all tools we went over along with the recording of this video. Perfect. Okay. All right. And we got the Google Plus community. Do they need to request to be in that? Yes, they do need to request to be in that and we'll approve you immediately. Okay. And once they get in that Google Plus community, we'll be posting all of the videos there as well. So any broadcast will be there available for you guys to use and any tools that we covered. Um, are linked inside of this event. So if there's anything that I missed, feel free to add there or anything else that you'd like to add in there, we'd love for you guys to. And I think that's it. All right. Do you guys want to right. end with um, Google Effects? <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like, oh, I got to get <laughs> back on video. All right. And just do randomize, you know. You just got to go all in. That's, that's, that's the way we roll. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end, stop our broadcast, and we will talk soon, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.